This is a flowchart you can use to help figure out what types of compound probability you're going to use. So compound probability, um, just like the word compound, like a compound sentence, means that we have more than two events going on. Okay, so compound sentence, two sentences put into one, compound probability, two events occurring, and we want to know what's the probability that both events would occur. So in this flowchart, you're going to need to fill in some of these boxes here that are empty on yours. So if you need to pause the video um, and go ahead and fill those in, that would be great, and then we'll go ahead and discuss them. Okay, so in this flowchart, you're going to start at this top box, and you're going to ask yourself, is there more than one event occurring or more than one condition? Okay, so more than one event occurring, that could be like I'm drawing two cards out of a deck. Um, it could be I'm rolling a dice. I might only be rolling it one time, but I want to know what's the probability that it's a three or a four. So there's more than one condition. If we would say no to this event, so for example, what's the probability that you flip heads on a coin? There is not more than one event occurring. There is not more than one condition, so we would say no. That's just simple probability. That's what we've been doing. So that's where you take the desired outcome and you divide it by the total outcome. So again, it should look like a fraction. If you would say yes, then you're going to go down here and you're going to ask yourself this question. Do both events have to happen? If you would say yes to this, one of the keywords you'll notice is the word and. A lot of times you'll see this in a question and this is a hint that we're going to start over here. Then you're going to ask yourself, does the outcome of the first event affect the outcome of the second? Okay. If you say, nope, they're separate events and they do not impact each other, we would go down here. That's what we call an independent event. So down here, you'll notice it says the probability of A times the probability of B. Um, it also has the words down here like with replacement. So if you're thinking about cards or drawing marbles, if you're going to replace them in between, the first uh, event does not impact the second event. So for example, with an independent event, this might be like, what's the probability that I flip heads on a coin and I roll a four on a dice? Okay, well, the probability of flipping heads on a, uh, on a coin, probability of A, that would be one half. Times the probability of B happening, well, the probability of rolling a four on a dice is one out of six. So I would take those two fractions, I would multiply them together, and I would get one twelfth. So the probability of both of those things occurring would be one out of every 12 times that I did both of those events. Okay, so again, independent, the events are separate from each other, they're independent, they do not impact each other. Versus over here, does the outcome of the first event affect the outcome of the second event? If I would say yes, um, that means that whatever I do for the first event, the probability here, I then multiply by the probability that the second event happens if the first event did happen. And one of the most common times you'll see this is if you're drawing cards or you're drawing marbles out of a bag and you're not replacing. Okay, so for example, I might ask, what's the probability that you draw two hearts in a row out of a deck without replacing the cards? Well, if I'm multiplying these together, the probability of drawing a heart the first time would be 13 out of 52. There are 13 hearts out of 52 total cards. And then because I'm not replacing it, I'm taking that card and I'm setting it off to the side. So now there are only 12 hearts left out of 51 total cards. And I would go ahead and multiply those two together to get my probability that I would draw two hearts in a row without replacing. Okay, so that's the difference between your independent and your dependent. Independent, the events stand alone. They don't impact each other. Dependent, they do impact each other. But both of these have that keyword and in it where we have to do both things in order for the uh, situation to be true. Okay, versus if we go to this side, do both events have to happen? If we would say no, the keyword that you're going to see is the word or. So or means there might be two scenarios that could happen or two criteria, but only one of them needs to happen in order for it to be considered successful. So then we have to ask ourselves, is it possible for both events to happen at once? If we would say no, that's mutually exclusive. So this might be, what's the probability that you would flip heads on the dice or roll the four, or sorry, flip heads on a coin or roll the four on the dice? Okay, well, we only need one of those to happen in order to be successful. So we would take the probability of A, flipping heads on a coin, is one half, and then we would add the probability that we roll the six on a dice, which would be one, or sorry, roll the four on a dice, which would be the one out of six. 
then we would need to add those together. One half is the same as three six, so we would be at four six for our final probability on that one. Okay, so mutually exclusive, it's impossible for the two things to happen at one time. Versus mutually inclusive, this is the one that looks like a long equation, it looks really confusing. This is saying, what's the probability that A happens or the probability of B happens, but we need to subtract the probability of both A and B happening at the same time, because this is what we would refer to as like double counting something. Okay, and I think one of the, the easier ways to describe this is if I had the numbers one through 10, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And I wanted to know, what's the probability of drawing a number that is an even number or a multiple of three? Okay, so I'm gonna show this with my sample space here. It's nice to see with the sample space, um, but sometimes your sample space gets a little bit too big. So we also want to understand this kind of equation here. So if it's an even number or a multiple of three, my even numbers are two, four, six, eight, and 10. So I have those in circles. And then I say, or a multiple of three. Well, multiples of three are three, six, and nine in this setting. Okay, and so you'll notice right now that this number six right here was circled and I put a triangle around it. It matched both of the criteria. So if I would just add them together, right now the probability of an even number is five out of 10 plus the probability of a multiple of three. There were three of them out of 10. So if I just added those together, I would be at eight out of 10. But if I actually count them up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I only have seven because this one is being counted in both of these fractions. Okay, so this part here is saying we need to subtract the number that's being double counted. So here there's one time that it's counted twice. So we're gonna subtract one out of the 10 so that we don't double it up. And that would leave us with a probability of seven tenths, which would match our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of 10, okay? So again, these are the different types of probability you're going to use. If you're looking for a definition, simple probability is just the probability that a single event happens. Okay, your independent event um, is the probability that two events would occur when they do not impact each other. This would be two events occurring, but they do impact each other. Down here, this would be one or the other thing occurs, um, but it's impossible for both of them to happen at the same time. And mutually inclusive would be one or the other occurs and it is possible for the events to occur at the same time. So you're gonna go ahead and use this flowchart to go ahead and complete your standard 11 activity one for today.